So you want to be a biomedical engineer. After all, blending the transformative feats of biology with the expansive approaches of engineering to heal, enhance, and save lives is nothing short of extraordinary. Today, we reveal everything you need to know about biomedical engineering. What career options they have, the technologies that they use, the absurd compensation, and the subtle secrets that make it so intriguing. It's time to discover what it means to be a biomedical engineer and give it to you straight. This is the reality of biomedical engineering. First, let's clear the room and figure out what a biomedical engineer actually is. We like to think of them as humanity engineers. This is because they mix standard engineering fields with human biology to perfect devices, medicine, and systems that directly benefit you, me, and the rest of the world. From implanted pacemakers and artificial joints to 3D printed tissues and organs, biomedical engineers are behind all of the best humanitarian designs, which is pretty freaking cool. But how exactly do these biomedical devices work? Basically, they are small computer-like meshes of technologies that take biological or user inputs and applies its internal algorithms to produce an output depending on what inputs were given. So let's take a prosthetic arm, for example. This device sits there waiting patiently to sense an electric shock running down the arm. Shocks that you and I send every time we move our hands. The prosthetic arm has a little electrical brain that has been pre-trained to expect these signals and to control little motors to move the hands, fingers, and arm to do whatever that little electrical brain says. So this device uses electrical and software engineering topics to control the arm, mechanical engineering aspects to make it comfortable and move properly, and biological and chemical aspects to understand the body's different signals and properly integrate the device with the body. Now if you think that's cool, just wait until we deep dive into the remarkable real-life engineering story of biomedical engineers that have revolutionized an age-old knee surgery, highlighting what makes biomed such a remarkable and rewarding career. But before we can get into that, we get to inspect how these engineers hone their crafts and reach their doctor tier status in the engineering world. Now to get into that, a biomedical degree isn't actually the only way to end up in this field. As we alluded to earlier, Biomed is really choosing one or two engineering fields and carving out a corner of biology to apply the practices of those engineering fields to it. Meaning that graduates from each of these majors also frequently end up working as biomedical engineers along with biomedical engineering graduates themselves. To no surprise, the Biomed curriculum reflects this Swiss army knife of everything math, science, and engineering. Let's take a look at the curriculum to see just what types of trouble these engineers can get themselves into. First, biomedical engineering students instantly get thrown into what we like to call the building block courses. These prepare them with everything they need to catapult into any broad corner of the vast biomedical landscape. They complete all your standard engineering math classes, the physics track, two circuits courses, and a few programming and 3D modeling classes to prepare for the exciting applications ahead. Now this is where most other engineering majors stop and move on to field specific courses. But biomedical engineers also tack on the ever important general chem, organic chemistry, physiology, and of course biology classes to grow biological and chemical skills to apply with the engineering. Once these building block courses are completed, our students are primed for biomedical specific courses that really start to narrow from those previous broad classes to just the physics and engineering of biomedical applications. The first biomed specific course is biomaterials, which is basically everything involving materials used in medical devices and implants. You'll cover the most common biomaterials, how they interact with biological systems, and the principles of design and testing for biocompatibility. But what does this actually benefit? Well, imagine a terrible accident that ends up requiring part of someone's skull to be removed. Well, this class gives you the skills to pick up the perfect mixture of materials for a temporary skull that the body will not reject, has the right timeline for decaying, and will be excreted properly when the skull naturally grows back. Truly life-saving work. But if I may say so myself, the biotransport class may be even cooler. This course covers the momentum, heat, and mass transfer in biological systems, as students learn how to analyze and model these transport processes in physiological and engineered systems. For example, students use these topics to learn how to 3D print a human organ. Seriously, we are still in the early stages of this technology, but bioprinting is actual 3D printing of artificial organs. 
Basically using what you learn from biomaterials with biomedical manufacturing principles to print blood vessels or an ear or even a real human heart. Maybe the next step for you is to make it more affordable because right now the cells for a heart can be over $100,000 alone. Anyways, we have the biomedical signals and controls course next. This focuses on the analysis and processing of biomedical signals and the control systems behind devices. This is where the circuits and programming comes in, like a pacemaker monitoring a heart for an irregular beat, providing small electrical shocks to get the beat back to the correct rhythm. Again, saving and highly benefiting countless lives. Finally, our biomechanics and manufacturing for biomedical engineering courses center on the mechanical engineering sides of things. More 3D modeling, finite element analysis, simulation testing, and manufacturing and physical testing of all sorts of mechanical movement. Much like analyzing the forces on a human body as it runs in order to assess an upcoming cartilage or ligament transplant needed from a sports injury. Which leads us right into the exciting final stages of your biomedical engineering degree. Your concentration and senior project. We've covered the broad engineering and biological basics, just learned about the biomed engineering basics, and now at this point in your degree, you usually narrow in on one subfield of biomedical engineering. But what are your options? Well, biomedical engineers can specialize and enter a huge number of fields from biosensors in the body, neural engineering deep inside a brain, mechanical behaviors of biological tissues and systems, and of course bioelectrical systems and biodynamics along with many, many other fields. Sadly, we don't have the time to cover all of these subfields, so if you want to see a video walking through all of them, or just want to support us for putting in the long hours to make this video, please drop a like, consider subscribing, and let us know in the comments what video you want to see next. Getting back to it, your senior project is a year-long endeavor in which you piece together a diverse team of engineers with the goal of designing something. Something like a sprained ankle robotic exerciser, brain-controlled wheelchairs, or even building a full-on strength-amplifying exoskeleton. I'm not kidding, these are all real projects that biomedical students attempted as their senior projects. Anyways, once this is completed, the senior project reveals accumulation of all of the hard skills you've gained thus far, plus real-world engineering design experience, a growing network, and soft problem-solving skills like project management and interpersonal conflict resolution. Now there are of course other important math and engineering courses that you could run into in the degree, but the ones we just went over are pretty much the must-haves for entering the biomedical engineering field. But enough with the university stuff, let's get our hands dirty with that real-life biomedical engineering design. Oh, and don't forget to stay to the end when we reveal just how much dough these lifesavers actually make. Our real life engineering design starts with my dad, actually, as he is an avid skier. A hobby that has left him with knee cartilage decay just like hundreds of millions of others affected by this. Unfortunately, his cartilage has been ground down so far that his femur and tibia bones actually directly grind against one another, causing higher levels of discomfort and pain than I really like to think about. He'll likely have the surgery sooner rather than later, but there is something that really worries me and my family about this surgery specifically. You see, there are multiple procedures to replace and repair knee cartilage, but all deviations require the cartilage to regrow and heal post-surgery. But the scary part is that the knee cartilage has a very tough, if not impossible, task to repair itself because the knee lacks a certain blood supply that is necessary for cartilage regeneration after the surgery. So as it stands, my dad could just be in pain for the rest of his life. A reality shifting thought that is hard to come to terms with. But thankfully, my family and I can put all of our worries onto the shoulders of biomedical engineers. Tissue engineers specifically have known of this problem far before I've had to start worrying about it, and have been working with a variety of cellular biologists, microbiologists, and other professionals to research and develop creative ways to develop a product or device that promotes cartilage growth. They spent month after month at the drawing board using MATLAB and COMSOL to model the biomechanics of the knee, garnering an intuitive understanding of the joint and pulling on years of biomechanics, biomaterials, and cellular and molecular biology to design something to fix this problem. Thankfully, their hard work pays off. They've come up with a biological gel that seems to promote cartilage growth, but 
Disaster strikes. Once they actually try this out in the knee, inserting the gel into the cartilage post-surgery, it simply slips right out of the cartilage and down the leg. Oh no. Our engineers did make sure that this is a safe biomaterial, so the body naturally excretes it, but years of brainstorming, testing, and long hours of head scratching is down the drain. Right? No! Actually, this is a perfect representation of problems that you'll face in an engineering design. Your proof of concept, the gel itself, can work amazingly. But as soon as you try to apply it in the full system, it can fail miserably. As my manager always likes to tell me, the devil is in the details. Of course they didn't expect the gel to slide out of the cartilage. Just like NASA engineers didn't expect a flaw on a Hubble telescope mirror causing blurry images from the 16 billion dollar satellite. But instead of giving up and trying to just go develop a different gel that stays put, they keep pushing, searching for another solution built on the back of their current one but fixes the issues found in testing. And voila, they make it happen. Not only do they develop and produce the gel, they now also have a bioadhesive that is able to bond to both the gel as well as the damaged cartilage in the knee, keeping the healing cartilage in place. Which solves the engineer's problem and more importantly provides relief to patients and their families worldwide, eventually granting the entire world access to a brand new healing procedure. Which gives you a good idea of not only the thought, persistence, and innovation that goes into a biomedical engineering design, but also just how awesome and rewarding it can be. Maybe you're the next engineer to hatch a world-saving medical design. When you do get to the top, just remember who taught you about biomedical engineering. Now before we wrap up, we know you want to hear about some dollar signs. How much do biomedical engineers make? For the work that they do, biomedical engineers rake in an average of just under $100,000 a year in the US, with senior biomedical engineers making around $100,000 $80,000 on the high end. This field is projected to grow 5% over the next decade, faster than the national career average at 3. Now with all of this in mind, would you want to be a biomedical engineer? Let us know in the comments below and check out this video to see how you can harness basically the same skills to create Tony Stark levels of engineering designs. Thanks for watching and happy engineering everybody!